Good morning everyone. In this video, we are going to cover the current affairs. For mobile optimized ebooks, please install GK Today Academy app. You can attempt the quiz in this app and you can read detailed explanation. For regular updates, please join our telegram channel. The link is given in the description box. We have started a new channel Civils Academy. You can subscribe to it if you find it relevant. For hard copy books, you can visit our website gktbooks.com. Now let's start. Which is the only country other than India to pass the miscarriage bereavement leave law. So this country is New Zealand and other than India, it is the only country to pass such law. Now first thing first, what is the objective of this legislation? This will provide employees three day leave when a pregnancy ends with a stillbirth. Now what is the meaning of this term stillbirth? Stillbirth is a death or loss of a baby before or during delivery. So both miscarriage and stillbirth describe the pregnancy loss. Now New Zealand passed a legislation and that is why it was in use. So far India and New Zealand are the only country which have such legislation. What is the name of our law which provide maternity benefits? It is MBA that is Maternity Benefit Act and it was amended in 27. Now New Zealand is also a part of Five Eyes Alliance. So this is an intelligence sharing alliance of New Zealand, Australia, US, Canada and UK. Recently, US was in news because India US Special Forces conducted Vajra Prahar. So, this is a joint exercise and it was conducted in Baklok. This place is in Himachal Pradesh. Name of exercises Vajra Prahar. Apart from that, few other exercises were in news. One such exercise is Aces Meet. So, Pakistan is going to conduct this exercise and it is Air Force exercise. In addition to that, recently India and Madagascar, that means the navies of India and Madagascar conducted a joint patrolling in the EEZ of Madagascar. What is EEZ? It is Exclusive Economic Zone. Apart from that, one more naval exercise was in use and it is La Pirose. So this is a French naval exercise and Indian Navy is going to take part in this exercise. In fact, all the Quad members are going to take part in this. Quad is Quadrilateral Security Dialogue. Four countries are the member Australia, India, USA and Japan. Japan is the host of Tokyo Olympic Games and recently a torch relay was started from Japan. Which institution releases the annual flagship report World Economic Outlook? So this is released annually by IMF. This time it is going to be released on 6th of April. Of course date is not important. So name of report is World Economic Outlook. It is released by IMF that is International Monetary Fund. IMF and World Bank are known as Bretton Wood institutions. Apart from that, few other reports were in news. One is World Development Report. So this is released by World Bank. Theme is Data for Better Lives. So this is the first World Development Report which focused mainly on the role of data for the development. Apart from that, recently one more report was in news and it is Investment Opportunities in India's Health Sector. And this is a report by Niti Ayo. In addition to that recently Global Wind Report was also in news and it is a report by Global Wind Energy Council. What is ever given? So it is the name of cargo ship. Recently it was in news because it was stuck in the Swage Canal. Now we have already covered this entire issue in our previous lecture. So please check that. From exam perspective you should know the geographical location of Swage Canal and it is a man-made canal. Second thing is that it divides continental Africa from Sinai Peninsula. Now recently one more event related to ship was in news and Norway is going to construct world's first ship tunnel. So which country is going to construct world's first ship tunnel? This country is Norway. Which state has recommended a judicial inquiry against the central agencies including ED? So next question is which state has recommended a judicial inquiry against the central agencies including ED. So Kerala government has decided to recommend a judicial inquiry against the central agencies. Actually this entire issue is in the backdrop of gold smuggling case. You need not to go into too much details because that is not that much important from exam perspective. But the entire scenario is that as per Kerala government the central authorities are derailing the investigation in gold smuggling case. So that is why the state government of Kerala has decided to appoint K.V. Mohan Commission for Judicial Investigation and 
के वी मोहन इज रिटायर्ड जज अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट रिसेंटली वन मोर कमेटी वॉज इन न्यूज एंड इट इज एच आर नगेंद्रा कमेटी सो दिस कमेटी वॉज इन न्यूज एज इट हैज बीन सेटअप बाई मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ आयुष बाय आयुष मिनिस्ट्री सेटअप दिस कमेटी टू एक्सप्लोर पोटेंशियल ऑफ योगा एज ए प्रोडक्टिविटी एनहांसिंग टूल दैट मीन्स टू एक्सप्लोर टू वट एक्सटेंट योगा कैन हेल्प यू इन एनहांसिंग और इम्प्रूविंग योर प्रोडक्टिविटी सो दिस काउंसिल और दिस कमेटी विल बी हेडेड बाई एच आर नगेंद्रा हु हैज बीन अपॉइंटेड एज अ चेयरपर्सन ऑफ एयरपोर्ट अथॉरिटी ऑफ इंडिया सो मिस्टर संजीव कुमार हैज बीन अपॉइंटेड एज अ चेयरपर्सन ऑफ ए ए आई दैट इज एयरपोर्ट अथॉरिटी ऑफ इंडिया अपार्ट फ्रॉम हिम फ्यू अदर अपॉइंटमेंट्स वर इन न्यूज मिस्टर सौरभ गर्ग हैज बीन अपॉइंटेड एज द सीई ऑफ यू आई डी ए आई दैट इज यूनिक आइडेंटिफिकेशन अथॉरिटी ऑफ इंडिया इट इज अंडर एम ई आई टी वाई दैट इज मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड इन्फॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी मिस्टर संजीव कुमार हैज बीन अपॉइंटेड एज अ चेयरपर्सन ऑफ ए ए आई दैट इज एयरपोर्ट अथॉरिटी ऑफ इंडिया मिस्टर अतीश चंद्र हैज बीन अपॉइंटेड एज अ सी एम डी ऑफ फूड कॉरपोरेशन ऑफ इंडिया नाउ आंसर इन कमेंट बुक्स एफ सी आई इज अंडर विच यूनियन मिनिस्ट्री अपार्ट फ्रॉम हिम रिसेंटली मुखमीत सिंह भाटिया has been appointed as the new dg of esic that is employees state insurance corporation esic is under ministry of labor and employment on the other hand prashant kumar singh has been appointed as a ceo of government e marketplace government e marketplace is a special purpose vehicle for procurement in ministry of commerce so in one appointment question we have covered five questions apart from him recently one more personality was in news and he is justice nv ramanna So answer in comment box why Justice N V Ramanna was in news recently. SEBI modified the requirement to formulate dividend distribution policy by top 500 listed companies to how many companies? Now top 1000 companies will be covered. What is the entire issue? See first thing first what is dividend? So suppose you invest your money in some company and that company earned profit. So it is going to distribute some part of that profit to its stakeholders or to its shareholders this is dividend so technically dividend is a distribution of profit by a corporation to its shareholders and the amount if not given back is usually reinvested in the business now is it mandatory to give dividend every year no it is not mandatory so why this issue was in news because now the top 1000 listed companies need to properly formulate the dividend distribution policy previously these rules were applicable to only top 500 companies top 500 listed companies now these rules will be applicable to top 1000 listed companies sebi that is securities and exchange board of india is the market regulator that means stock market regulator for companies we have companies act of 2013 and it is governed by mca that is ministry of corporate affairs in fact csr is also a part of this companies act and india is the first country in the world to have a law regarding csr what is csr it is corporate social responsibility now recently this mca that is ministry of corporate affairs was also in news because of iep fa application or mobile app what is this iep fa it is investor education and protection fund authority so as the name suggests it is for the education and protection of investor recently this was launched and it was launched by nirmala sitaraman nirmala sitaraman is our present finance minister she also holds the portfolio of mca and this iep fa is an initiative by ministry of corporate affairs which legendary singer won the maharashtra bhushan award this is the highest state honor by the state government of maharashtra so asha bhosle won this maharashtra bhushan award for 2020 and this is the highest honor by state government of maharashtra it is given to recognize the outstanding achievements of eminent personalities and it was instituted in 1996 who has been selected as ey entrepreneur of year 2020 so mr harsh mariwala has been selected as ey entrepreneur for 2020 he is the chairperson of mariko and mariko is a consumer goods company apart from him pratap chandra reddy the executive chairperson of apollo hospitals was given the lifetime achievement award bajju ravindran was given the award for business transformation and pius bansal of lenskart was given the and pius bansal of lenskart was awarded in the startup categories so lifetime achievement award was given to the chairperson of apollo hospitals business transformation award was given to the chairperson of bajju and in startup category the award was given to the pius bansal of lenskart 
Visa web portal is associated with which union ministry? So it is associated to Ministry of Education. Present Education Minister is Ramesh Pokhriyal Nishank. Recently, this portal was in use because the Education Minister released 100 plus comic book created by the teachers and students of CBSC schools. So Disha is online learning portal. What is the full form of Disha? It is digital infrastructure for school education. And this is an initiative by NCERT. What is NCERT? It is National Council of Educational Research and Training. And this NCERT is under Ministry of Education. Now recently, Education Minister was also in news as he inaugurated Anandam. And this was inaugurated at IIM Jammu. So what is this Anandam? It is the Center for Happiness. What is the name of India's first Earth Observation Satellite which is to be placed in Geosynchronous Transfer Orbit. So the name of this satellite is GISET-1. It is India's first Earth Observation Satellite which will be placed in Geosynchronous Transfer Orbit. So the name of satellite is GSAT-1. It will be launched through GSLV F10. GSLV stands for Geosynchronous Satellite Launch Vehicle. GISAT stands for Geo Imaging Satellite. So, this is going to be Earth Observation Satellite, and this is India's first Earth Observation Satellite that will be placed in Geosynchronous Transfer Orbit. It will be done by ISRO. ISRO is our space research organization, that is, Indian Space Research Organization. It is under DOS, that is, Department of Space. The headquarters of ISRO is in Bengaluru and presently Dr. K. Sivan is the chief of ISRO. Which country has proposed retaliatory trade actions against India for imposing equalization levy on e-commerce companies? Now before that, let me give you the background of this entire story. See, a lot of digital companies are from USA. For example, Google, Facebook, Amazon. All these companies are from USA. Now, since most of these companies are from USA and these are digital companies, so they do not have to pay tax in our country. They pay tax in their home country. Home country in the sense that the country where the headquarters of these companies is situated. So, in order to solve this issue, India started the concept of equalization levy. This levy or this taxation was to be imposed on those e-commerce companies which are not paying tax in India. Since most of these companies are from USA, now USA is planning a retaliatory trade action against India. So first thing first, what is equalization levy? It is a direct tax and it is applicable on those companies or on those entities which are non-resident service provider. So as of now, online advertisement is covered as a part of equalization levy. And the approximate rate is, I think, 6%. Please check it. So this was the entire issue. Now, recently, USA was also in news as USA added India to the list of countries which are affected by ASF. What is ASF? It is African Swine Fever. So what will be its impact? Now, since USA has added India into the list of countries which are affected by African Swine Fever, therefore, it has imposed restrictions on the import of pork, and pork products from India. So that so this is how it is going to impact our exports of pork and pork products to USA. USA was also in news because recently India sent the first consignment of red rice to USA. This red rice is grown in Assam in Brahmaputra Valley and this rice is rich in iron. It is also known as Baudhan. Recently Assam was also in news because of Numaligad refinery. So why this refinery was in use? First thing first, this is a refinery in Assam. Recently it was in use as BPCL, that is Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited, sold its entire stakes of 61.5% from this refinery. So BPCL decided to exit from this refinery by selling its stakes. So in, in question they may ask that Numaligad refinery is in which state of India. Second probable question is, BPCL sold how much stakes? So it sold its entire stakes. Now your homework is to find out who are the other stakeholders in this Numaligad refinery. As per the recent report of IUCN, what is the status of smaller, lighter African forest elephant? So first thing first, what is IUCN? It is International Union for Conservation of Nature. It usually publish a red list of species. And as per the recent assessment, the two species of elephants in Africa are facing problem because of the 
poaching and because of human encroachment. So as per this assessment, the savanna elephant is in endangered category and the smaller lighter forest elephant is in critically endangered category. IUCN is International Union for Conservation of Nature. This was established in 1948. Right now, it has the observer status in United Nations. The headquarters of IUCN is in Gland in Switzerland. Heal COVID, which was in news recently, is a nationwide trial to be implemented in which country? So this is related to UK. UK is United Kingdom. So what is Heal COVID? It is helping to alleviate the longer term consequences of COVID-19. So as the name suggests, it is an initiative to alleviate the long term consequences of COVID-19. So this is a national drug trial to be conducted by UK for the selection of safe and existing drugs which are already available in the market in order to find the effective treatment. UK was also in news as it is the host of G7 summit. It was also in news as it is the host of COP26. COP26 is related to United Nations Framework Convention for Climate Change. So this is related to environment. COP stands for Conference of Parties. Now in the context of environment, recently another summit was in news and it is two-day climate summit. So this is a climate summit of world leaders and USA is going to host this two-day climate summit of world leaders and it will be organized on the occasion of Earth Day. Earth Day is on 22nd of April. For this summit, Indian Prime Minister is also invited. Now recently, US and UK were also in news as they proposed that the democratic countries in the world should look for the alternatives of BRI of China. What is BRI? It is Belt and Road Initiative. So it is infrastructure initiative by China. Now US and UK has proposed that the democratic countries should look for the alternatives of BRI. Recently China was also in news as it has signed a deal with Iran. So this is a 25 years deal worth 400 billion dollars. So as per this agreement, China is going to invest 400 billion dollars in Iran. Recently, China was also in news because of Hong Kong. Hong Kong is a special administrative region of China. So why it was in news? Because recently, China reduced the share of elected representatives in Hong Kong legislation. So previously, the number was high. Now China has reduced it and now only 20 out of 90 members will be directly elected. So this was done to increase the grip of China over Hong Kong. Who was Kamlesh Chandra Chakrabarti? So he was the former deputy governor of RBI. Recently he was in news because he passed away. What is RBI? It is Reserve Bank of India. Apart from him, recently few other personalities were in news. So recently Beverly Clary passed away. She was from US and she was well known children's author. She passed away recently. In addition to her, recently Actor Rajni Kant was also in news as he has been selected for 51st Dada Saheb Falke Award. So this award is given for his outstanding contribution to the Indian cinema. In addition to him, recently Soma Mondal was also in news. Soma Mondal is the current chairperson of SAIL. SAIL is Steel Authority of India Limited. Now she has been appointed as the new chairperson of SCOPE. What is SCOPE? SCOPE stands for Standing Conference of Public Enterprises. So now she has been appointed as the new chairperson of Standing Conference of Public Enterprises. So we covered four names, Kamlesh Chandra Chakrabarti, Beverly Clary, Rajni Kant, and Soma Mondal. Which ministry has mandated companies to disclose their investment in cryptocurrencies? So it is simple and logical question. Companies are regulated by Companies Act of 2013. And this act is under the domain of MCA that is Ministry of Corporate Affairs. Now Ministry of Corporate Affairs has made amendments in the Companies Act and therefore it is mandatory to disclose the investment of companies in cryptocurrencies and their expenditure in the CSR that is Corporate Social Responsibility and Benami Properties. Now please note that India is the first country in world to legislate corporate social responsibilities and this is being done through Companies Act of 2013. Now Companies Act of 2013 was also in news because of NCLT that is National Company Law Tribunal. So this is a adjudication body and it has been 
constituted as per the provisions of Companies Act of 2013. So why this NCLT was in use? Recently, Supreme Court uphold the decision of Tata Sons to remove Cyrus Mistry as chairperson. So what is this entire story? Long story short, Cyrus Mistry was removed as chairperson and later he was removed from the board of company. So he approached NCLT, then the decision of NCLT was challenged in NCLAT. What is NCLAT? It is National Company Law Appellate Tribunal. And then the decision of NCLAT was challenged in higher courts and the final decision was given by Supreme Court recently. So what Supreme Court said? This NCLAT reinstated Cyrus Mystery on the Tata Sons board. That means it said that the removal of Cyrus Mystery was not correct. However, now as per the recent judgment of Supreme Court, the decision of NCLAT has been set aside. That means it is no longer applicable and Supreme Court has overturned its decision. In simplest term, it said that Tata Sons removed Cyrus Mystery and it uphold the decision of Tata Sons to remove him from the board and from the chairperson. So in exam they may ask you that Cyrus Mystery is associated to which entity or NCLAT are constituted as per the provisions of which law. Which armed force has decided to employ retired combat dogs as therapy dogs. So this has been done by ITBP. ITBP is Indo-Tibetan Border Police. So for the first time retired dogs will be used as therapy dogs. Apart from that, they will also be used in the treatment of soldiers, specially abled children. So this is the first time in our country that retired dogs are being used to serve the soldiers. ITBP is part of CAPF. CAPF are Central Armed Police Forces. They are under MHA. That is Ministry of Home Affairs. Recently, Home Minister launched Ayushman CAPF. So it is a health scheme for CAPF members. For this it has collaborated with NHA, that is National Health Authority. Where is the Indo-South Korean Friendship Park? So recently this park was in news and it has been constructed in New Delhi, Kent. So this park has been constructed to commemorate the contribution of Indian peacekeeping forces during the Korean War of 1952-53. Recently it was jointly inaugurated by the defense ministers of both countries. The Indian Prime Minister launched the Swan Jayanti Scholarship for the youth of which country? So, Prime Minister of India is on the official visit of Bangladesh. As a part of this initiative, he announced Swan Jayanti Scholarship for the youth of Bangladesh. This is a scholarship which will be provided by DST, that is Department of Science and Technology of India. DST is under Ministry of Science and Technology. Now, please note that Bangladesh is celebrating 50 years of its independence. Apart from that, Bangladesh is also celebrating 100 years or 100th birth anniversary of Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Sheikh Mujibur Rahman is considered as the founding father of Bangladesh. Presently, the Prime Minister of Bangladesh is Sheikh Hasina and she is the daughter of Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Name of her party is Awami League. So this time it is very significant for Bangladesh because A. It is 50 years of independence. B. They are celebrating 100th birth anniversary of their founding father. On this occasion, a museum was also inaugurated. And this museum was inaugurated at the Banga Bandhu International Conference Center in Dhaka. So this museum has digital exhibition of Mahatma Gandhiji and Banga Bandhu. Sheikh Mujibur Rahman is popularly known as Banga Bandhu. Present Science and Technology Minister is Dr. Harshwadhan. Recently he was in news as he participated in first ever World Immunization and Logistics Summit. Now in the context of science, one more event was in news and it is AIM Prime. So to support the science-based startup companies, this initiative has been launched. AIM stands for Atal Innovation Mission and Prime stands for Program for Researchers on Innovation, Market Readiness and Entrepreneurship. So you just need to remember that it is an initiative by Atal Innovation Mission. Atal Innovation Mission is a part of Steps by Niti Ayo. Which fintech company has launched distributor to retailer finance. So this is an initiative by Bharat Pay. Bharat Pay has recently launched a new lending product and the name is D2R Finance that is distributor to retailer finance. So the objective is to provide more liquidity to the distributors, to the wholesalers, traders and to the dealers. 
Objective is to focus on the small and medium enterprises. It is going to offer collateral free loans up to rupee 50 lakh for a period of 7 to 30 days at lower interest rate. So, couple of important points. First, it is for small and medium enterprises. Second thing is that it is going to be a collateral free loan. Third thing, interest rate is going to be little bit lower. And fourth thing is that it is for smaller period. That means from 7 to 30 days. Apart from this news, few other financial events were in news. First is capital infusion in PSB. PSB stands for public sector banks. So government has announced that it is going to invest or it is going to infuse 14,500 crore rupees in four PSB. So this is important for banking aspirants. Now, which are these four banks? First is CBI, that is Central Bank of India. Second is Indian Overseas Bank. Third is Bank of India. And fourth is Yuko. Apart from that, one more event was related to banking sector and it is an agreement between State Bank of India and JBIC. What is JBIC? It is Japan Bank for International Cooperation. So these two signed an agreement and as per this, SBI has raised 1 billion from JBIC. So it has raised 1 billion dollars from JBIC. Next question is, new bacteria found in International Space Station has been named after which Indian scientist? So, it has been named after Ajmal Khan. Ajmal Khan is a renowned Indian scientist and his specialization is in biodiversity. So, the name of this strain is Methylobacterium Azmali. It is named after Ajmal Khan and it has been found in and it has been discovered at ISS. What is ISS? It is International Space Station. So, at International Space Station, four strains of bacteria have been discovered. And one of them is given the name Methylobacterium Azmali. Now, ISS is a collaboration of different space agencies. To be specific, it is a collaboration between five space agencies. These five space agencies are NASA. NASA is the space agency of USA. Roscosmos, it is the space agency of Russia. JAXA, it is the space agency of Japan. ESA, that is the European Space Agency. And last one is CSA, that is Canadian Space Agency. So it is a collaboration of five space agencies. Now, this ISS is in LEO, that is low earth orbit, and it is habitable artificial satellite. Next question is, which country is to play the host to the Asian Football Confederation Women's Asian Cup of 2022? So, India is going to be the host for this tournament. And for this tournament, D.Y. Patel Stadium in Navi Mumbai, a stadium in Ahmedabad and in Bhuneshwar are going to be the host for this tournament. It is women's football competition. It will be organized in February next year. So it is Asian Football Confederation Tournament and it is a Women's Asia Cup. Now, apart from this sport event, two other events were in news. One is related to IPL, that is a cricket tournament. IPL stands for Indian Premier League. It is a cricket tournament and it is going to be organized in April month. It is going to start from 9th of April. Recently, why this IPL was in use? Because Upstokes is going to be the official partner for IPL 2021. Who is the organizer for IPL? It is BCCI. Current BCCI president is Saurabh Ganguly. So this was related to cricket. Another event is related to Bahrain Grand Prix. So Lewis Hamilton won this 2021 Bahrain Grand Prix. He is a driver from Mercedes. Next question is, what is the new milestone reached by the Jal Jeevan Mission scheme across the country as on 31st of March 2021. So it is 4 crore. That means so far it has provided 4 crore tap water connections to the rural households. Name of initiative is Jal Jeevan Mission. It was announced in 2019 and objective is to provide tap water supply to the every rural home by 2024. So far that means Till 31st of March 2021, it has achieved the target of 4 crore tap water connections to the rural households. Now, Goa is the first state in our country to achieve the milestone of 100% tap water supply. So, Jal Jeevan Mission is an initiative of Jal Shakti Ministry. Recently, on 22nd of March, World Water Day was celebrated. And the theme of this World Water Day was valuing water. On this occasion, that means on the occasion of World Water Day, Prime Minister announced Catch the Rain campaign. So the objective of this campaign is to promote 
water conservation and it is an initiative by ministry of jal shakti next question is in which year government e marketplace portal was launched so this was launched in 2016 why it was in news recently because recently the public procurement of goods and services through this portal or through this platform has crossed 1 lakh crore and that is why it was in news so what is this government e marketplace see different government departments and ministries purchase different items for example there is a department of science and technology so suppose they need to purchase 100 computers so this gem is just like any online shopping platform for example amazon so through this portal government agencies procure different items the objective of this platform is to ensure transparency in public procurement that means transparency in procurement by different government agencies and departments so that is why in 2016 this was launched and with the help of this platform goods and services are procured by the government ministries and departments recently it was in news because it has crossed the milestone of rupee 1 lakh crore next question is earth hour day is annually observed on the last saturday of which month so it is observed annually on the last saturday of march month this year it was observed on 27th of march so this earth hour is an initiative by wwf what is wwf it is world wildlife fund so this initiative encourages the global community to switch off the electric light that means to turn off your electric lights for 1 hour from 8:30 in night that is from 20:30 to 21:30 why so the idea is to spread awareness about our commitment to the earth so that people can understand the significance of nature and they can take different initiatives to protect our precious natural resources so that is why this earth hour day is celebrated so this time it was on 27th of march now on 27th of march world theater day is also celebrated on 1st of april recently utkal divas or odisha divas was celebrated on 2nd of april international children's book day was celebrated and 2nd of april was also celebrated as world autism awareness day you might have seen pa movie that was related to this concept of autism now recently odisha was also in news because of mahindra giri today the pan is not working properly so that's why i am not able to change the color but after this lecture i will check what is the issue so odisha was also in news because of mahindra giri what is mahindra giri so odisha government has proposed that mahindra giri can be the second biosphere reserve in odisha so what is the name of what is the name of first biosphere reserve in odisha it is simli pal odisha government has now proposed that mahindra giri that mahindra giri can be the second biosphere reserve in odisha odisha was also in news because first of april was celebrated as utkal divas or odisha day it was also in news because india's first fire park is going to be in odisha next question is mitali express a passenger train which was inaugurated recently connects dhaka with which indian city so dhaka is the capital of bangladesh recently this mitali express was in news because it was inaugurated by the prime minister of india and the prime minister of bangladesh it is a passenger train between india and bangladesh and it connect and it connects dhaka kent to the new jalpaiguri and it is in west bengal so this is the third passenger train between india and bangladesh other two are maitri express which connect dhaka to the kolkata and second is bandhan express which connect khulna to kolkata now please note that this year is being celebrated as 50 years of diplomatic ties between india and bangladesh apart from that bangladesh is also celebrating the 100th birth anniversary of banga bandhu sheikh mujibur rahman sheikh mujibur rahman is the founding father of bangladesh now please note that bangladesh became a separate nation after india's victory over pakistan in 1971 war so this time that means 2021 is also special because we are celebrating 50 years of our victory in that war apart from that on the occasion of birth anniversary of banga bandhu that is the founding father of bangladesh bangladesh is organizing a multinational military exercise and the name of this exercise is shantir agroshena so this is the name of exercise it is being organized by bangladesh and from indian side 
our army is going to participate in it. It means front runner of the peace. Actually, this will be organized to commemorate the 50 years of 1971 war. Next question is, which state has the largest number of old vehicles in India as per the recent data by Road Transport Ministry? So as per the data, Karnataka has the highest number of vehicles which are older than 15 years. All over India, the number is 4 crore vehicles. That means 4 crore vehicles are older than 15 years and they are still being used by the public. Out of this 4 crore, approximately 70 lakhs are in Karnataka and Karnataka is on top position in this matter. Now please note that recently this road transport ministry released a vehicle scrappage policy. Now answer in comment box, what is the time limit as per this new policy for the private vehicles? Recently this road transport ministry was also in news as it announced that in national register for DL that is driving licenses is being considered. So with this the database of all the driving licenses will be unified. Please note that driving licenses are issued as per the provisions of Motor Vehicle Act of 1988. Now in the context of transport, recently two other significant events were in news. First is decision taken by the Punjab government. So now women passengers can travel for free in all government run buses in Punjab. So this is a new initiative announced by the Punjab government as per that women passengers will not be charged any fare in government run buses. Second initiative related to transport is related to railways. So recently railway announced that no charging of electronic devices will be allowed between 11 pm to 5 am. Next question is as per the annual report of CIC that is Central Information Commission which union ministry made the highest rejections of request. So so this has been done by MHJ that is Ministry of Home Affairs. It had the highest rate of rejections of RTI applications. What does that mean? Suppose you file any RTI. Now it is the responsibility of ministry to provide you the answer for that specific application. But on certain grounds these applications can be rejected. One such ground is national security or nation's sovereignty. So MHA had the highest rate of rejection of such applications. RTI or this CIC is constituted or set up as per the provisions of Right to Information Act of 2005. So it is a statutory body. Recently MHA was also in news because Home Minister launched Ayushman CAPF scheme. CAPF stands for Central Armed Police Force. CAPF are under Ministry of Home Affairs. For Ayushman CAPF, MHA that is Ministry of Home Affairs collaborated with NHA that is National Health Authority. Recently NHA was in news because Mr. Ram Shevak Sarma has been appointed as new CEO of National Health Authority. PK Mishra, Anil Ghanwat and Ashok Gulati are the members of Supreme Court appointed committee to study which issue? So the correct answer is to study the agricultural laws. So it is a Supreme Court appointed four member committee. Now please note that recently this panel was in news because it has submitted the report to the Supreme Court. The fourth member is Bupinder Singh Man. Now this fourth member decided to quit this committee. Apart from this, recently few other committees were in news. So recently ACC that is appointment committee of cabinet approved the appointment of Malika Srinivasan as the chairperson of PESB. What is PESB? It is Public Enterprises Selection Board. Public Enterprises Selection Board. So recently Malika Srinivasan has been appointed as the chairperson of this PESB. Now please note that C is the CMD of TAFE. T -A -F -E. And C is the first person who is from private sector and has been appointed as the chairperson of PESB. In addition to this committee, few more committees were in news. Recently Labour Ministry decided to constitute three committees to oversee the OSH and WC. Now this is important for EPFO examination. So please read about it. What is this OSH? It is Occupational Safety, Health and Working Conditions Code Bill. So it is regarding Occupational Safety. Recently Labour Ministry constituted three committees. One committee will be headed by DK Shami and this committee is going to oversee the fire safety. Second committee is going to be headed by PLN Murthy and this committee is going to oversee the building and construction workers. 
third committee is dr r k elangwan committee so this committee is for factories and for dock workers all these committees are under the administrative domain of ministry of labor and employment next question is what is the new inflation target band fixed for the next 5 years that is from 2021 to 2026 so from 1st of april we have new fiscal year and from 1st of april 2021 to 31st of march 2026 the inflation target is fixed that means rbi need to make sure that the inflation rate remains within this specified range and this has been done under rbi act of 1934 So what is this inflation range? It is between four plus minus two percentages. That means at lowest it can be two percentages and maximum it can be six percentages. So it is going to be between this range. Before first of April, that means till thirty first of March twenty twenty one, RBI already had the inflation target and it was same. That is four plus minus two percentages. Now please note that an expert committee headed by Dr. Urjit Patel had recommended this. inflation targeting this committee recommended that this inflation should be the nominal anchor for monetary policy framework and it should be within the range of 4 plus minus 2 recently dr patel was also in news as he has been appointed as the additional director of britannia dr patel is the former governor of reserve bank of india now for monetary policy framework we have mpc that is monetary policy committee now monetary policy committee is a six member committee out of which three are appointed by the government of india and three are from reserve bank of india and this committee is headed by rbi governor present rbi governor is dr shaktikant das next question is what is the amount raised by the government from disinvestment of cpsc in 2020 21 cpsc stands for central public sector enterprises so the amount was 32835 crore rupees so this is from the disinvestment of cpsc through the share sale and through buyback please note that for this year the disinvestment target is 1.75 lakh crore rupees now there is a term buyback what does this mean so buyback is a corporate action as per that a company try to buy its shares from the existing shareholders now suppose you are a company a b c your shares are in market say you have your 40% shares and rest 60% shares are in market and these shares are purchased by different shareholders again it is over simplification just to make you understand so in buyback what you try you try to buy your shares back from the market so suppose you can make it like 45% and 55% so you try to reduce the numbers of shares in market and you try to purchase them so this increase the proportion of your shares in the company this is buyback next question is which institution in its reports south asia vaccinates estimates india gdp growth in the range of 7.5% to 12.5% now in this question this range is not that much important but this report is important so the name of report is south asia vaccinates and it is a report by world bank targeted growth ranges from 7.5% to 12.5% apart from that recently one more report was in news and it is world in 2030 it is a public survey report so this is a report by unesco and as per this report the four biggest challenge in front of the societies of 2030 are going to be climate change violence and conflict loss of biodiversity discrimination and inequality and last one is water housing and food so this is a report by unesco in exam they may directly ask you that world in 2030 is a public survey report by which international organization next question is aim prime program launched by the niti aayog is associated with which objective so this aim a i m stands for atal innovation mission it is an initiative of niti aayog niti aayog is national institution for transforming india it is an executive body so the objective of this aim prime is to promote science based startups what is the full form of aim prime that is program for researchers on innovations market readiness and entrepreneurship now in simplest term objective is to promote science based startups and for this purpose atal innovation mission has collaborated with bill and melinda gates foundation prime minister is the ex officio chairperson of niti aayog niti aayog is a successor of planning commission now 
Please answer in comment box in the context of planning commission what is Gadgil plan. One more thing on regular basis I see comments that sir why don't you highlight the answer itself. See when you are going to revise your current affairs the goal is before I answer your brain should select the correct answer. Now if I am going to highlight it at that point of time it will create a problem for your revision. So for your own convenience during revision I try to avoid direct highlighting of answers. You will understand it when you are going to revise this information. Next question is Lakhta Center that was recently awarded with Amporis Skyscraper Award 2019 is located in which country? So this is in St. Petersburg of Russia and this award is given to the high rise architecture. Please note that this is the first time Russia has backed this award since its inception. That means since the beginning of this award for the first time Russia has got this award. The height of this building is 462 meters. It is in St. Petersburg in Russia. Now in the context of architecture there is one more famous prize and it is Pritzker prize. It is the highest international honor given in the field of architecture. Answer in comment box for 2021 who are the winners of this Pritzker prize. Next question is what is the name of web portal launched by education minister Ramesh Pokhriyal Nishank for NCET web portal. So it is my NEP 2020. What is NCTE? It is National Council for Teachers Education. It has been recently inaugurated by Education Minister. So the idea is to get suggestions from different stakeholders so that a draft for the National Professional Standards for Teachers and a draft for the mentoring program can be framed. So this is an initiative related to standards of teaching and the quality of teachers. Next question is which international organization released Global Gender Gap Report. So this has been released by WEF that is World Economic Forum. As per this India is on 140th position. Last year India was on 112nd position. So you can see that there is a big drop in India's ranking. So this World Economic Forum released this Global Gender Gap Report. The first such report was released in 2006 and it is released on the basis of four dimensions. What are these four dimensions? First is economic participation, then educational attainment, then health and survival and last one is political empowerment. So India's overall ranking is 148th and now India is one of the worst performers in South Asia. The top country is Iceland and Finland is on second position. Norway is on third position. Next question is the Comprehensive Economic Cooperation and Partnership Agreement that is CECPA between India and which country has came in force from 1st of April 2021. So this country is Mauritius. Now why it is so significant? Because it is the first time India has signed up such agreement with any African country. So first please see the geographical location of Mauritius. So this is the geographical location of Mauritius. This is our country. This is Arabian Sea, Bay of Bengal and Indian Ocean and this is Atlantic Ocean. So Mauritius is the first such African country with which India has signed such a trade agreement. Apart from that since 2011 it is the first time India has signed a free trade agreement with any country. The capital of Mauritius is Port Louis. Now recently its neighbor Madagascar was also in news. Why? Because India has donated an advanced digital cobalt therapy machine and this machine has been developed by BARC that is Bhabha Atomic Research Center and the name of this machine is Bhabatron Second. So recently this machine was inaugurated in Anantarivo. Anantarivo is the capital of Madagascar. Which organization released Forest Governance by Indigenous and Tribal Peoples Report. So this has been released by FAO. FAO is Food and Agriculture Organization. So it is Organization of United Nations. Recently it completed 75 years and on that occasion India released a commemorative coin. The headquarters of FAO is in Rome. Rome is in Italy. So it has released Forest Governance by Indigenous and Tribal People report. As per this report, deforestation rates in Latin America and Caribbean are significantly lower in indigenous and in tribal territories. Now for the welfare of tribal community in our country we have MOTA that is Ministry of Tribal Affairs and we have TRIFAD. This TRIFAD is under the administrative control of MOTA. 
Now, what is TriFed? It is Tribal Cooperative Marketing Development Federation. So, recently this TriFed was in news because of its two initiatives. One is be the brand ambassador of Tribes India and second competition that it launched was be a friend of Tribes India. So, these two initiatives are launched in association with mygov.in. It has been launched by TriFed. TriFed is under the administrative control of Ministry of Tribal Affairs. Next question is Cactus and Cisco are the software launched by DST that is Department of Science and Technology. The question is these are associated with which field? So these are associated with solar mission. DST announced that scientists have developed a new technique to track the huge bubbles of gas which are ejected from the sun and this new technique will be used in India's first solar mission. What is the name of India's first solar mission? It is Aditya L1. And for that purpose, these two softwares will be used. One is Cactus and second is Cisco. So what is Cactus? It is computer-aided CME tracking software. And what is Cisco? It is CME's identification in inner solar corona. So the name of our solar mission is Aditya L1. And it will be the first solar mission. Solar means to study the sun. So it will be our first solar mission. And as a part of this mission, we are going to observe the lower region of solar corona. Now recently DST that is Department of Science and Technology was also in news as it announced Swan Jayanti scholarship. So these scholarship will be provided by Department of Science and Technology and this is for the youth of Bangladesh. Why so? Because this year that means 2021 is being celebrated as 50 years of India-Bangladesh diplomatic ties. Apart from that recently Government of India announced scholarship to the descendants of liberation war fighter of Bangladesh. What does that mean? See, those who participated in the liberation war of Bangladesh, so the descendants of such people will be provided scholarship by the government of India. Please note that DST is under Ministry of Science and Technology and present Science and Technology Minister is Dr. Harshwadhan. Dr. Harshwadhan is present Science and Technology Minister he also holds the portfolio of Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Recently, he launched Integrated Health Information Platform. So, as the name suggests, it is going to be our disease surveillance program. And India is the first country in the world to have such an advanced disease surveillance program. Now, in the context of health, recently, National Digital Health Mission was also in news. Ayushman CAPF was also in news. Ayushman Sehat was also in news. Apart from that, recently, Rajasthan became the first state in our country to provide free health insurance to all. In addition to that, recently, Rajasthan was also in news because it became the first state to commission farm-based solar power project under PM Kusum scheme. What is PM Kusum? It is Pradhan Mantri Kisan Urja Suraksha Evam Uthan Maha Abhiyan. So the first such project has been carried out by Rajasthan Renewable Energy Corporation and this has been done at Bhaloji village in Kotputli and this is in Jaipur region of Rajasthan. Now in the context of health one more event was in news as recently Ministry of Health and Family Welfare launched national policy for rare disease. So in just one question we have covered at least 10 important news events. One more thing every year on 28th of February this rare disease day is observed. Next question is, which country has released the world's first animal vaccine against novel coronavirus? So Russia is this country and it has released or it has launched world's first animal vaccine against coronavirus. Name is Carnivac Cove. So the vaccine claims that use of this vaccine will prevent the development of mutation of virus. Mutation means change. So the virus keep on changing keep on mutating and that is why it is very very difficult to prevent it. So now Russia claims that it has developed world's first COVID-19 vaccine for animals and name of this vaccine is Carnivac-Cov. Recently Russia was also in news because of a new law and this new law will allow Russian President Putin to stay in power till 2036. Before this there was a limit on presidential terms that means President can continue for two consecutive terms. But now, this new law will set aside that limit. Next question is, Finance Ministry has announced rules to scrap which four-decade 
body formed under income tax or wealth tax acts so the name of this body is settlement commission recently finance ministry has announced rules for winding up of settlement commission so the settlement commission used to resolve the disputes related to income tax and wealth tax and it was constituted in 1976 under income tax act of 1961 and wealth tax act now instead of this commission a new dispute resolution system will be provided and this new dispute resolution system will be available to the assessees with a taxable income up to 50 lakh and where the dispute income is up to 10 lakh rupees so what is this entire issue see suppose you are a taxpayer t1 you paid the tax money now there is a dispute dispute in the sense that government says you paid less tax on the other hand you are saying no you paid right amount of tax so this is a dispute so for the resolution of such disputes we had settlements commission now government has notified the rules to scrap this settlement commission instead of this commission there will be a new different system for the resolution of such disputes now for reducing tax disputes there was one more scheme and it was vivad se vishwas so answer in comment box whether this scheme Vivad Se Vishwas scheme was for direct tax or it was for indirect tax. Next question is which country has created a world record for the fastest road construction? So this is our country and India has entered a Guinness world record by building a 2.5 km four lane concrete road within 24 hours. Apart from that it also built 25 km bitumen road between Solapur to Bijapur. In addition to that a record construction of 37 km per day was achieved during the last financial year present road transport minister is mr nitin gadkari recently this road transport ministry was also in news as it introduced national register for driving licenses that is dl so the idea is to make a common database for the old driving licenses so that we can prevent the duplication or misuse of driving license a similar project is being done for the property plots and the name of this initiative is ulpin like we have aadhar card so aadhar card is unique for each individual similarly for each plot there will be unique identification number so this ulpin stands for unique land parcel identification number so this is going to be a 14 digit number and this will be provided to the every plot of land in our country now answer in comment box aadhar is how many digit number aadhar is issued by uidai that is unique identification authority of india it is under ministry of electronics and information technology that is miti next question is which bank has partnered with jbic of japan to extend loans to the japanese automobile manufacturers in india so this has been done by sbi that is state bank of india it has signed agreement with jbic that is japan bank for international cooperation for loan agreement up to 1 billion dollars jbic is completely owned by the government of japan so the idea is to promote or to ease out the flow of funds for the business operations of japanese automobile manufacturers in our country now sbi is dsiv that is domestic systemically important bank three banks are given the status of dsiv these are hdfc icici and sbi and this status is given by RBI that is Reserve Bank of India recently RBI was in news as RBI deputy governor BP Kanungo retired now in the context of finance sector few other events were in news first is phone pay so recently phone pay became the first player in the industry to cross billion transaction mark on UPI what is UPI it is unified payment interface second is related to NPCI that is national payment corporation of india so it has transferred its bharat bill payment business to its new subsidiary nbbl third is related to uni carbon card so what is this uni carbon card U- union bank of india has launched a co-branded credit card and the title is uni carbon card this has been launched as hpcl co-branded carbon card now coming back to japan so recently japan was also in news because japanese physicist isamu akashaki passed away and he won the nobel prize in 2014 and he won the nobel prize in physics so they won the nobel prize in physics for revolutionary led lamps 
Now recently Japan was also in news as it recorded its earliest cherry blossom bloom in 1200 years. So as per the climate experts this is a sign of climate change. Next question is which telescope captured the M87 black hole within its magnetic field? So this has been done by EHT. What is EHT? It is Event Horizon Telescope. So for the first time the scientists who were working on Event Horizon Telescope have created an image showing the magnetic field around a black hole and this black hole is located in M87 galaxy. So what has been done? Few important terms. First is M87. So it is the name of galaxy. Second is black hole. This black hole is in this M87 galaxy and around this black hole a magnetic field is there. So the scientists have created an image showing this magnetic field around this black hole and this has been done with the help of Event Horizon Telescope. Now what is black hole? So black hole is a region of space time. In simplest term this is a area where gravity is so strong that nothing can escape. So no light can escape from it and that is why it is black. Next question is which ministry has amended the rules pertaining to location of thermal power plants near cities and national capital region. So this has been done by MOEFCC that is Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Recently it has amended the rules related to the location of thermal power plants within the 10 km of major cities with more than 10 lakh population and in the NCR that is national capital region. Apart from that as per the amended rules certain emission norms have been specified and these norms are to be followed by thermal power plants latest by the end of 2022 that means emission limits are specified and these limits are to be followed by these thermal power plants. Now in this context a task force will be constituted by CPCB. What is CPCB? It is Central Pollution Control Board. So this task force will categorize the thermal power plants based on their location. CPCB is a statutory body under Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Now in the context of power plants, recently India's largest floating solar power plant was in use and this is going to be in Ramagundam and Ramagundam is in Telangana and this will be commissioned by NTPC that is National Thermal Power Corporation and it will have the capacity of 100 megawatt and for your factual knowledge it will have 4.5 lakhs PV panels that is photovoltaic panels. Recently CPCB was also in news as it collaborated with BMC that is Bhopal Municipal Corporation to set up India's first e-waste clinic in Bhopal. Bhopal is in Madhya Pradesh. Next question is what is the full form of HSN? HSN stands for Harmonized System of Nomenclature. Why it was in news? Because recently Finance Ministry has notified that the business entities with a turnover of more than 5 crore need to have this 6 digit HSN code. So turnover limit is 5 crore. This HSN is a 6 digit code. So this is international system of names and numbers to classify the traded products and it came in effect in 1988. So what is this HSN? See when you are transporting goods from one place to another place say from A to B these codes will be used and with the help of these codes it can be identified that from where this transportation was started what is the product inside it so it will speed up the checking process. This system is used all over the world. Now recently finance ministry has announced that business with annual turnover of more than 5 crore will have to use the 6 digit HSN code on their tax invoice with less than 5 crore will have to furnish 4 digit HSN code. Previously the requirement for both was 4 digit HSN code and 2 digit HSN code. Now as per the new rules for more than 5 crore turnover 6 digit code is mandatory and for lowers and for lesser than that 4 digit code is mandatory. So HSN stands for harmonized system of nomenclature. It was adopted by WCO that is World Customs Organization and it was adopted by WCO in 1988. We, we in the sense that India adopted it in 1986. Yes, even before WCO. So it applied to both GST and to the customs. So now this HSN code make the process of filing GST easy. Why so? Because 
If you use HSN code, then you need not to upload the details about the goods that you are transporting. So this will speed up the trade all over the world because it will speed up the clearance process. Now in the context of trade, recently one more event was in news. Recently India proposed that it is going to allow trade of sugar and cotton with Pakistan. However, Pakistan rejected this offer. Please note that Pakistan is now suffering a shortage of these products and that is why India offered the trade of these products. However, Pakistan now denied and it had said that no bilateral trade would be encouraged with India until Article 317 is restored in Jammu and Kashmir. Which state has amended its provisions in Legislative Assembly to maintain the decorum of house? So this state is Haryana. Recently, Haryana has amended several provisions related to conduct of business in the Legislative Assembly of state. One such provision is that it is mandatory to have the presence of at least two ministers in the house plus as per the new provisions, it prevented the members from tearing of the documents in the house in protest. So the objective is to maintain the decorum of house. Haryana was also in news as recently Haryana Legislative Assembly passed a bill to recover damages from the protesters in case if they damage public property. So during riots or during any protest, if protesters damage public property, as per this new bill, such damage will be recovered from these protesters. Apart from that, Haryana was also in news as recently it approved a bill to reserve 75% of the jobs in private sector for the local people, that means for the people of Haryana. This is for private sector and reservation is 75%. The Chief Minister of Haryana is Manohar Lal Khattar and Governor is Satyadev Narayan Arya. Next question is which ministry has released the report Women and Men in India 2020. So this is a report by MOSPI, that is Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. The title of report is Women and Men in India 2020. And this is the 20th report in the series. The first such report was published in 1995. So this report provides the data related to gender. Now recently, one more report was in use and it is Gender Gap Report. This is a report released by World Economic Forum. As per this report, India is on 140th position. Last year, India was on 112nd position. Next question is, as per the data by National Saving Institute, which state has made the highest contribution to the government's small saving schemes? So this is the state of West Bengal. As per this recent data released by National Saving Institute, West Bengal has made the highest contribution to the government's small saving scheme and it has contributed for more than 15% in the deposit at post office and in the banks. So West Bengal is on first position in this context and it is followed by Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra and Gujarat and then Tamil Nadu. Next question is which university has secured the first place among Indian universities in academic ranking of world universities? Now first thing first, this academic ranking of world universities that is ARWU is also known as Shanghai ranking. Shanghai is in China. So this ranking was released recently. As per this ranking, Calcutta University is the first among the Indian universities. Please note that this is about universities. If we talk about higher educational institutions, then it is on third position in our country. IISC Bengaluru is on top position among the higher education institutions. So as per this ARWU, Harvard University is on top position globally. Stanford is on second position in India and Calcutta University is on third position among higher educational institutions. In our country, IISC Bangalore is on top position in terms of higher educational institutions. Now recently, one more institution was in use and it is IIT Kanpur. So why it was in use? It was in use because IIT Kanpur developed a touch sensitive watch for visually impaired people. So that is why this IIT Kanpur was in use. Now coming back to Shanghai. So there is an institution named after Shanghai. It is Shanghai Cooperation Organization that is SCO. So SCO is Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Total eight countries are the members of SCO out of which Russia, China, India and Pakistan are member and four Central Asian countries are the members of SCO. 
except Turkmenistan. So out of total five Central Asian countries, Turkmenistan is not member of SCO. The headquarters of SCO is in Beijing. Please note that even though the name is Shanghai Cooperation Organization, headquarter is in Beijing. Beijing is in China. SEO was also in news because of rats. Answer in comment box, what is rats in the context of SEO? Now recently China was also in news because of Longi Green. So what is this Longi Green? It is world's largest solar company and it is a Chinese company. So why it was in news recently? It was in news because now it has decided to enter into the hydrogen market. Apart from that, China was also in news as recently plant insect gene transfer was reported for first time and this has been done by the scientist of China. That means the transfer of gene between the plant and insect. Usually the transfer of gene happen among the same family that means from plant to plant or from insect to insect but this is first time that a gene has been transferred from the plant to insect. So that is why it is significant. Next question is which organization has launched the Sankalp Se Siddhi village and digital connect drive. So this has been done by TriFed. What is TriFed? It is Tribal Cooperative Marketing Federation of India. TriFed is under MOTA. What is MOTA? It is Ministry of Tribal Affairs. Recently TriFed launched the Sankalp Se Siddhi Village and Digital Connect Drive. So the drive commenced on 1st of April. The main intention of this initiative is to activate the Vandhan Kendra of villages. Now what is this Vandhan Kendra? So there is a scheme by government of India, One Dhan Scheme and the scheme was launched in 2018 and it is a scheme by MOTA in association with TriFed. So it aims to improve the income of tribals through value addition of tribal products. So the objective is to increase the living standard of tribals, how that will be done by increasing their income, how income will increase by the value addition of tribal products. So as a part of this scheme, one dhan kendras are set up. These are set up for skill upgradation and for the capacity building. Next question is which organization has developed an advanced shaft to safeguard naval ship against missile attack. So this has been done by DRDO. What is DRDO? It is Defense Research and Development Organization. So recently it has developed an advanced shaft technology. So this term can be asked directly that advanced shaft technology was in use. It is related to. So this technology is used in the naval ships. So why it is used? It is used to self-defend against enemy radar and radio frequency missile seeker. In simplest term, this advanced shaft technology is used in the naval ships for their own protection or for their self-defense. Recently, DRDO has developed an advanced shaft technology. So this will help us to protect our naval ship against any missile attack. Now recently one more technology was in use and it is air independent propulsion. Answer in comment box what is the objective of air independent propulsion system? Okay DRDO is Defense Research and Development Organization. It is under MOD that is Ministry of Defense. Next question is what is India's target for ethanol blending in petrol for 2022? So the target for ethanol blending in petrol is 10% by 2022. So why this issue was in news recently? Because India has achieved more than 7.2% of ethanol blending in the fuel for the first four months of ethanol supply. And this is the highest ever we have achieved so far. So that is why this was in news. Target is to reach 10% of ethanol blending in petrol by 2022. Some states like Goa, Karnataka and Maharashtra have achieved up to 9 to 9.5% of ethanol blending. Now recently Bihar was in news as it approved ethanol production promotion policy and therefore it became the first state in our country to have an ethanol promotion policy. Recently Bihar was also in news because of one controversial law and it is Bihar Special Armed Police Bill. So this bill allows the special armed police officers to carry out the search and to arrest without warrant. So that is why there was a lot of controversy about it. It provides the power to the special armed police force to carry out search and arrest without warrant. Now recently one more police bill was in use and it is Police Crime 
sentencing and courts bill so this bill was in news because of uk parliament and people are protesting against it so the protest against this bill has been named as kill the bill protest so in exam they may ask you that recently which country was in news for kill the bill protest so people of uk are protesting against this police crime sentencing courts bill so as per the protesters this new bill will provide more brutal powers to the police next question is on which day the national maritime day is celebrated so it is celebrated on 5th of april this time we celebrated 58th edition of this national maritime day the first such event was celebrated in 1964 so why 5th of april is so significant because it was on 5th of april in 1919 indian shipping first started with the with the ship ss loyalty and the ship sailed from mumbai to uk now 5th of april is national maritime day now 5th of april is national maritime day on the other hand 6th of april is international day of sport for development and peace 5th of april is also celebrated as international day of conscience apart from that recently one more day was in news as recently government announced that 14th of april will be a public holiday from now onwards why so because it is the birth anniversary of dr bhim rao ambedkar dr ambedkar was the first law minister of independent india so now government has announced that 14th of april which is the birth anniversary of dr ambedkar will be observed as a public holiday on the other hand 4th of april is observed as mine awareness day that is international mine awareness day and the theme of this year was perseverance partnership and progress apart from that 1st of april was celebrated as utkal divas or odisha divas now recently odisha was also in news because of adi kavi sarla das so recently vice president m venkaiya naidu addressed an event and this was event to celebrate the 600th birth anniversary of adi kavi sarla das sarla das was one of the greatest scholar of odia literature odia is the official language of odisha and during this event the vice president gave kaling ratna award to biswa bhushan hari chandan mr hari chandan is the governor of andhra pradesh the award was given by the vice president and this award is conferred by sarla sahitya sansad and this is in the memory of adi kavi sarla das next question is which cryptocurrency exchange has launched nft that is non fungible tokens marketplace for indian artists and creators so this has been done by wazirx it is a Indian cryptocurrency exchange recently it has launched NFT that is non fungible token marketplace for the Indian artists and creators. So as a part of this mechanism, Indian artists can now place their digital assets like audio, video, or any other art piece for auction over blockchain based this NFT marketplace, and they can earn royalty. So this is India's first such NFT marketplace, and that is why it is very significant. What is NFT? It is non fungible token fungible means all the currency units are same like one can be replaced for other non fungible token means every unit is specific and it is unique and therefore it cannot be replicated or it cannot be replaced by some other unit next question is who has been appointed as the head of bcci's anti corruption unit so mr shabbir hussain has been appointed as the head of bcci's anti corruption unit what is bcci it is board of control for cricket in india so it is the governing body for cricket in our country recently it was in news because of ipl ipl is indian premier league presently the captain of indian male cricket team is virat kohli answer in comment box who is the captain of india's female cricket team recently virat kohli was also in news as he has been appointed as the brand ambassador of digit insurance now in addition to this recently few other sports events were in news first is men's boxing world championship so this is going to be organized in 2023 and this will be organized in tashkent tashkent is in uzbekistan second is miami open so this is a tennis tournament and recently hubert hokaj won it so these were the most important questions now get ready for the test please make sure that you attempt the test without pausing the timer and write down your score in the comment box
Thank you and that's all for the day.